digestive system to the lymph system and then into the bloodstream. In the bloodstream, these guys are great big honking complexes. I mean big relative to the others. They are the lowest density and they're great big fluffy structures. When they hit the bloodstream, the bloodstream takes them and they get to the point where they are at the capillaries and the capillaries are too small for the complexes to go through. So the chylomicrons get stuck in the capillaries and the capillaries are where the tissues are that really need a lot of this stuff anyway. So they secrete enzymes. Pop, good pop quiz question would be what enzymes would they secrete if they, wanted to, if they wanted to break down fat? Lipases, very good. So they secrete lipases and the lipases start breaking down that chewy interior of fat. I like to think of it as the Oreo cookie and they're eating the center away from the Oreo cookie. Stuart? The cells at the, the capillaries. Sorry, yeah. So, the, so you've got the capillaries that stuck, these cells with the capillaries, and they see Oreos sitting there. They start secreting lipases so they can start breaking down the Oreo to get the goodies. It is protein on the outside, but these enzymes can make it into the inside. Good question. Okay, so the center starts getting chewed away. Well, cholesterol, untouched. Okay, it's untouched. It sits there, doesn't do anything. Meanwhile, this, this chylomicron is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. And guess what happens? It gets small enough, it makes it through the capillaries. So now the chylomicron still has some of the fat, not as much as before. It still has the fat-soluble vitamins. It still has the cholesterol. And now it travels through the capillaries, enters the venous system, and goes back to the liver. The liver says, oh boy, I got to manage this. Okay? The liver's got to manage sugar, it's also got to manage fat, and it's also got to manage cholesterol. Well, the fat and cholesterol are contained in these chylomicrons. And by the way, there's a name for them after they've been had their centers sort of digested away. They're called chylomicron remnants because they're not completely chylomicrons anymore. Part of their interior has been eaten away. The remnants are taken in and absorbed by the liver. Well, now the liver is just full of fat, it's full of cholesterol, it's full of all this sort of stuff. What's it, why, does it, why does it absorb it? Well, at some point, it's going to need to release it when the body has needs for these things. Okay? So the liver sits there going, okay, well, I'm just waiting for my moment uh, when all of a sudden these things are going to be needed. The liver senses, and I'll tell you later how it senses, but it senses that the body is needing some fat, cholesterol, and so forth. Okay? So when, that, when it senses that, the liver makes a complex of its own. The complex that the liver makes is called a VLDL, very low density lipoprotein. It's called very low density lipoprotein. Was that the question? No. Well, I'll tell you what triggers it, but, what, but when the liver gets the signal, I'll tell you about in a bit, it does this. All right, so the liver's responding to the body's needs. It's putting out this fat, this cholesterol. VLDLs go out there, and a very similar thing happens to what we saw in the chylomicrons. It goes out, it gets stuck, various insides get eaten away, some of the vitamins get taken, some of the fat gets taken, but the cholesterol still remains. Well, when you start chewing away the insides, the VLDL becomes an IDL, which stands for an intermediate density lipoprotein. And an IDL gets broken down and becomes an LDL, a low density lipoprotein. At each step along the way, the amount of cholesterol hasn't changed. So in terms of percentage, the complexes that have the highest percentage of cholesterol are the low density lipoproteins. Any of you have ever been to a doctor and have had cholesterol checked and the doctor says, whoa, your bad cholesterol is high. The bad cholesterol they're talking about is the LDL. Okay, now, well, what does this mean? LDLs are linked to atherosclerosis. High levels of LDL are linked to atherosclerosis. This is a very active area of investigation, understanding what makes LDLs high. 
Why do high LDLs cause atherosclerosis? Well, we know a little bit more about the, the second part. In the second part, we, we actually have information about these guys. What we know about LDLs is that they can actually get damaged by reactive oxygen species. They're very readily damaged by reactive oxygen species in your bloodstream. If that happens, your immune system recognizes them as a problem and attacks them with macrophages. The immune system attacks the damaged LDLs with macrophages. The more LDLs you have, the more likely they're going to clump together. And when they clump together, what you have is a clump of these guys. You have these immune cells. You have the LDLs. You have something that looks really ugly. It's called a foam cell. It's actually not more, it's, it, it, well, that's what it's called. It's called a foam cell, all right? That foam cell is called foam because it looks foamy. It's full of this cholesterol me me mess, I guess is the word I want to say, okay? It looks nasty. It's got these immune cells there. It's got all kinds of problems at that point. That foam cell becomes the genesis of a plaque that becomes an atherosclerotic plaque. Yeah. So the foam cell is the starting point, that's the genesis, the starting point for the formation of the atherosclerotic plaque. High, high LDLs, more likely you're going to make foam cells, more likely you're going to have atherosclerotic plaques. Yes, ma'am? The, the damaged LDLs are attacked by the immune system cells known as the macrophages. M-A-C-R-O-P-H-A-G-E-S macrophages attack them. Well, so one of the things your doctor is going to want you to do is to lower your levels of LDL. Well, how do you lower it? How do you raise it? Well, a good way to lower it, exercise. Another good way to lower it is watch your diet, saturated fatty acids, and trans fats are linked to increasing LDL levels. Unsaturated fats are linked to reduced LDL levels. Okay? Smoking increases LDL levels, another way to kill yourself. One of the reasons smokers have higher incidence of heart attacks is they have higher LDL levels caused by the smoking. Why? Smoking makes reactive oxygen species. Okay. Well, there's one more DL on here I haven't talked about. It's called the HDLs. Those are the high-density lipoproteins. You must think those must be the worst of all. They're actually the best of all. They're actually scavengers, and they pick up the pieces of LDLs as they're being sort of the insides are being eaten by the cell, and they scavenge that cholesterol and take it back to the liver and literally clean out your veins, arteries actually, but literally clean them out. So if you have a high level of HDL, your doctor is going to be happy because you've got a good scavenging system for taking away excess cholesterol. <coughs> How do you increase your HDLs? Well, a good way to increase HDLs is exercise. Absolutely. Exercise, exercise, exercise. Probably the best way to increase your level of HDLs. OK, so in a nutshell, that is the different forms of cholesterol. The last thing I want to tell you about, oh, yes, Lynette? HDLs pick up what are called the, the, the pieces or the remnants of the LDLs as they're being taken apart. So rather than let some damaged one lay around and do nothing, the HDLs will pick it up and take it back, uh, the pieces back to the uh, liver. Okay. Now, I didn't tell you a little bit about, well, how does the liver know when to put things out? All right. That's a very cool and interesting thing, and it's one of the things that we know something about now. Your liver cells and your regular cells have something on them called an LDL receptor. LDLs actually get swallowed by the cell. We saw it early in the term when I talked about receptor-mediated endocytosis. That was where the cell had this receptor that grabbed the LDL and it actually engulfed it and swallowed it up inside. Okay, That's called receptor-mediated endocytosis. Your liver cells have 
LDL receptors on them, just like your peripheral body cells have them as well. The liver uses them for a little bit different purpose, though. The peripheral cells are using it to take up goodies. And the liver uses it to take up goodies to some extent as well. But the liver cell is using it to monitor the levels of LDL in the bloodstream. Let's imagine the liver says, OK, I think the body needs a bunch of VLDLs. I'm going to send it out. The VLDLs go out and convert it, get converted to IDLs and LDLs. Some of the cells out there in the body are going to grab those LDLs and are going to take that and swallow up those LDLs. What's going to happen to what the liver released? Well, it's going to disappear. The liver's not going to see it again, right? So if the liver puts out a bunch of LDLs and only a little bit comes back, what's the message that the liver is getting? It needs more. So it makes more. Okay. When the liver puts out a bunch and a bunch comes back, the message to the liver is, whoa, we got all that we need. Don't send us any more. Right? So the LDL receptor on the liver is helping the body to measure how much the body is taking up these things that the liver is putting out. Well, why do people have high cholesterol then? Well, we don't know completely, but one of the clues comes from a disease called familial hypercholesterolemia. Long name. F-A-M-I-L-I-A-L. That's familial. Cholesterolemia is C-H-O-L-E-S-T-E-R-O-L-E-M-I-A. Familial hypercholesterolemia. Now, what is that? It's a disease. It's a genetic disease. And it's a genetic disease in which the recipients, or the people who have this disease, have defective liver LDL receptors. Those receptors cannot bind to LDLs. What happens? The liver puts out a bunch of VLDLs. They go out. The peripheral cells take what they want. The LDLs come back to the liver, and the liver doesn't see them. What happens then? The liver says, whoa, they ate everything I put out there. Let's make some more VLDLs. And it sends out even more. Whoa, it didn't take that either. So it sends out even more. This disease uh, is a disease that uh, used to be fatal by the time you were 10 years old. Okay? A, relatively, uh, a level of cholesterol in your bloodstream where people start getting concerned is at about 200 to 240. Okay? If you, I, I actually had a student who had a son who had this disease, and I didn't believe it because it's very rare, number one. And it is usually fatal by, by age 10 because people die of a heart attack of too much cholesterol. I'll give you an idea about this. She said, no, no. She said, I know that's what he's got. And I said, yeah, sure. Well, she described it to me. And this young man, it turned out he did have the disease. Okay, This young man had LDL levels over 800. Okay, And they didn't know. Of course, you don't typically do cholesterol tests on kids. All they knew about this young man was when he was about six years old, he started developing blisters on his body, and they couldn't figure out what they were. And fortunately, one doctor realized that what these blisters were were cholesterol. He had so much cholesterol that it was puffing out on his body. Okay? Now, there's a very good ending to this story, and I love this ending to this story, because if, he had had this, if they had discovered this disease about five years prior to the time that they actually got it, he probably would have died of it. But by the time they discovered it, the statins had become discovered. The statins are used to lower levels of cholesterol. And by lowering levels of cholesterol, they lower levels of LDLs. So with a combination of statins and a couple of other drugs, they've actually gotten his cholesterol level down into the 200s, where it looks like he'll live a completely normal life, which is really cool. Okay? So it's a very rare disease, but it actually gives us some insights about why LDL levels are what they are. Okay? There's a lot of factors that go into it. And I'm not going to go into those here because I'm running out of time. But if you're curious about some of the factors that go into high cholesterol and so forth, if you know somebody who has high cholesterol and you're concerned, uh, come talk to me. I'll be happy to tell you more. Quick questions on what I just had to say? Yes, Sue. So. 